A team can be made up of all kinds of people, uh, and it may range from contributions big and small, uh, or from people who might make it almost a full-time job through to people spending half an hour on proofreading, and all of those contributions are really important to developing and shaping the resource. In particular, you're going to end up with a leadership team, and you may have that set up uh, at, the, at the outset, or it may develop over time, and that can be made up of, say, a project manager, lead editors, lead authors, uh, and, and those kinds of people who are really taking ownership and driving the team forward. In addition, we think that having a team of advisors or, or even just one or two people who you can call on is really important as part of that, that leadership group as well. They might not be directly involved in the work of the project, but they can be a really great sounding board for when problems do arise or if you have questions that you just want that little bit of extra input on. Teams also need champions uh, and that kind of the enthusiasm that they bring. Uh, and they're, they're always exciting people to get on board when you can find them. It's also important to look for the kind of support that you have at your institution, uh, and that might be from librarians, uh, instructional designers, accessibility experts, people like that are, are often available to you and, and really excited about this work as well. So be thinking about how they might be able to contribute to your team. Students are another fantastic part of this, uh, and that may be grad students you're working with, it might be undergrads, it might be people taking the courses who you either run the content by or, or have involved up front to decide what kind of uh, what angle that you should be taking or what should be covered, things like that. Investing students in this process is really great too. And you may also just end up with some interested observers who aren't in a position or aren't able to contribute but are interested in what's going on and, and keep an eye on, on the work that's happening and, and they can, you know, over time turn into people who are, who are able to spread the word and, and really uh, help get the, the book out there once it's completed as well. So in our experience, some of the factors that we've seen in really successful teams include having a really clear vision at the outset and having everybody invested in that, uh, really understanding the goals of the project and why you're doing the work is important. In addition, good communication is critical. Uh, it's, it's really probably the, the key factor, and, and by communication we also mean not just between, say, the leadership team and, and the, the participants, but between the, the team as a whole, and really kind of taking the time to foster that community spirit and have people in contact with each other and able to talk through things uh, has been really positive for teams that we've worked with previously. It's also important to have a good mix of people, um, making sure that you do have different perspectives included uh, and, and that they all have the space to contribute and shape the project and, and align with their expertise and their understandings as well. It could be that you have a core group of, say, three people working together really well and that's achieving all your goals and doing everything you need it to do. You might have a group of 50 people doing that or anywhere in between. Uh, there's really no, no one model for what a successful team looks like and it's just about taking the time to figure out what works for you and what's going to help you uh, through the the course of your project over time. And then if you are in a position of being a leader, a few things to keep in mind as well, and this one might seem obvious, but we will say it, be nice and understanding and remember that the people you're working with are people, they often have you know competing priorities, but if you kind of take the time to, to, uh, to really think about how you're interacting with them and making sure that you're supporting them in whatever way you can, that always makes it a, a better experience for everybody. Uh, and part of that as well is recognising the effort that people put in in whatever way you can. And that again might be a really big contribution, it might be small, but all of them are, are part, of the, uh, part of the success of your book and all, all really valuable. Another role of the leadership team is to really set up the framework within which everybody can do their best work. So that means uh, you know, having good documentation, having things like community guidelines or MOUs up front, and making sure you set up the team to really achieve what they're setting out to do by, by putting in that preparation work up front um, and helping to kind of foster the, the culture and the work along the way. And a lot of that work, setting up the framework and, and creating that documentation happens during the project scoping phase, which we'll talk about in the next video.